Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm excited because it's the first time opening my double doors. Finally time to get an automotive project in here. If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been doing a lot of carpentry work. So I'm excited. Open my door here. And get my first automotive project. And today it's gonna be the Kawasaki Brute Force 750. And I'm going to be backing it up. I got my ramp here. I'm ready to go. I'm going to back it in. My little mini garage here. Okay, so this is my Kawasaki Brute Force 750 4x4 EFI electronic fuel injected. Meaning it'll start in the winter really good. And it's a V-twin two-cylinder. It's got a lot of cool accessories, and it's got oversized custom tires. All the plastics are good, everything, but the only thing minorly wrong with it was the little oil leak when I bought it, and I got holders that go on either side of here, but they're just missing some clips, and Dad's got some, so that's no big deal. And so everything's nice. All the plastics are really nice. Everything works on it, but... I just want to fix this oil leak before I run any farther and run out of oil. So what I'm going to be doing is the oil leaks back in there. I can't really get to it, so I'm going to be taking off these bolts and these um, clips with a flathead screwdriver, taking this assembly apart so I can get back in. All right, and these bolts along here are 10 millimeter. I just want to let you guys know that I got an oil pan under there, so in case it drips, I won't get it on my floor. And As you can see, the oil's leaking right out, right here. So that has to do with oil slinging and the chains whipping the oil everywhere. So it's leaking out right here. So I found where it's leaking. That's a good thing. Okay, so see that? That might be from the factory. I don't know. But there's a split in this grommet here. The oil was leaking out when I put the throttle on. And um, so what I'm going to do... It's a big deal here, but I gotta take off all these 8mm bolts, hose off, drain the antifreeze, take the water pump off, take this big bolt off. It looks like they um, were already in here before, see so how shiny the bolt was, and this is not an original um, get, uh, gasket. And so what I'm gonna do is take all this assembly apart, and it might be cracked gasket or... I don't know, but we'll see. I'm going to take this all apart, guys. This might be a big deal. Okay, so we got the timing chain cover off, and the gasket doesn't look like it's on right. As you can see, it's cracked now, so I'm going to have to order another one. But, there we go. That was a struggle. It must have been held on by a magnet. The water pump seal was a kind of a pain to get off, but damaged it. So I'll have to order one of those, but got to do what you got to do. Okay, here's where I am so far. So, as you remember, I got the cover off here. And here's the timing chain assembly and all that. And I think it's called the stator seal or the timing chain seal. Um, right there. As you can see, it was broken. I'm trying to get it off. So, what I did last night is ordered parts. I ordered a stator gasket seal. And I ordered a water pump. I, the seal for that, I I had to damage to get it off, but um, I ordered one of that, and I ordered it in a kit, so it came with um, a gasket, a seal, 
and a bearing and it's this bearing down here doesn't really need it but I'm gonna replace it anyways and I got a um, two tubes of RTV which I'm gonna be using I'm gonna clean all of this off I'm gonna goop it and then I'm gonna put my seal on or my gasket and it'll smush down in there and then I'll put another layer on that around there so that I know it's sealed permanently and while I'm in here I wanna um, replace what's necessary so that's what I'm gonna do get that back together get this cleaned off and I'm just using some simple green and sandpaper and I'm lightly lightly sanding this and I don't want to get any groove or anything in this otherwise the oil may leak so I'm doing it super flat sanding this with um, 220 sandpaper so should be just a fine sand to get any of this excess seal off get the dirt off the crud off and then in the holes where the bolts go on there's dirt so I'm going to be cleaning that out and getting this all nice and clean before I assemble my parts should be coming in in a day or two so I'm happy to get this together Alright guys, so I cleaned and sanded all the way around on both and I got the excess uh, seal gasket off and it looks pretty shiny. I um, actually used a chopstick to get down there and get all the crud out of the bolt holes and so everything is clean and is ready for parts. So cool. Oh, and one more thing is I cleaned the um, wire grommets and what I noticed that might be a cause of the leak is where the wires going over here um, the grommets as you can see it has one flat side and it has one indented side and they stop uh, stack on top of each other this one is thicker grommet than this one and they had it instead of flat to flat they had it the, um, the groove to flat and I'm thinking maybe oil got through the gap there because they were touching like that down in there and it was um, it probably wasn't working so I'm gonna rearrange it and this one was on top I'm gonna put the thicker one on the bottom when I reinstall and see if that changes anything and like I mentioned I'm gonna put RTV on it and um, now I'm just waiting on my part. Alright, I'm still waiting on parts. It's a little bit later here. But what I want to do is take these racks off. It looks like the owner painted that one because it's a little more um, brighter red than the front rack here. But I'm going to take these off. These are 12 millimeter bolts. Get them touched up. I think I want to paint them rust oleum black to give them a little more contrast. And um, 12 millimeter bolt, like I said. Alright. Get this off here. Take it off like so. And as you can see, there's a little rust spots and stuff. I want to get this looking really nice. And I'm going to paint this black. Get the back one off now.
got a 716 under here. Where is it? Right there. All right, I'm out in the woods here behind my bone. Not worried about a drip. I got my two racks. And I'm gonna be putting on this wire here across two trees. And this will give me room to paint both sides up in the air. It'll be nice and easy for me. So I'm gonna wrap this on the trees, face these apart, and I'll get this up into place. All right, I think these will work here, guys. I got my lower rack and my front rack, and they're up into place. Now easy to paint, spray paint. All right, here's my cheap Harbor Freight $10 air sprayer here, using Dad's air compressor. And as long as I clean it, I can use it. So I'm gonna have one third paint thinner and two thirds paint on my rust oil. And I'm gonna stay 12 inches away. And this will have a nice even coat on the on the um, rack here. And it's a lot faster. All the surface is cleaned. This is called the stator gasket that went along here. Alternator gasket. Here's my alternator. But here's my bearing for my water pump that goes onto this shaft. And then he here's where my stator cover goes on. Now what I did, and here's my wires. What I did is I used brake clean. Clean these all off nice. And these grommets fit down into here like so. Clean the top of this off, sanded it, no junk or oil or uh, any leftover residue of the gaskets on it. I cleaned up here, sanded this all nice. And so what I'm going to do is put my gasket on. My parts finally came and, and I'm going to be using black RTV. Here's my gasket that I ordered. And... This will fit right exactly onto GT237 gasket. And this will fit right on like so. Got my water pump. Got my bearing. My water pump seal. This bearing I'm going to replace. I already checked it on it. And this is a... This is where I got it from. And... Got black... Adhesive RTV sealant that I'm going to be putting on my gasket onto that so I can secure it make sure that it'll stay on no leakage brake clean Doo -doo -doo. And Canon oil filter number KN 204-1. I got full synthetic 10w40 oil and I'll do an oil change. We're gonna get some um, uh, do an oil change, new oil filter, new oil, and then I'm going to do some antifreeze in it. And so, yeah, I'm going to get started. All right, I'm putting a thin layer of black RTV on all the way around where my gasket will be going. I'm just flattening it out with my finger. All right, I'm lining the gasket up straight and even and on the pins. This is called the alternator steer gasket. And the black RTV is so I can make sure for insurance that, that this gasket won't leak because these are very thin kind of gaskets. So, Alright, while I'm at it, I want to replace this bearing. This is for the water pump. And I got a socket, 5 eighths, 
Now I'm going to put it down in here and give it a tap with a hammer and it should pop right out. Like that. So now I'll replace it with my new bearing. This is a number 1069. And I'm putting the new bearing in flush. And I got it the same way as the old bearing. Using a socket. And trying to get it fl <coughs> flush. Here's my inner seal. And it's going to go down in here like so. And I'm going to do the same thing like the bearing. And I'm going to use a socket so I can hit into place down in there I wanted to get it flush and once it touches I'll stop all right here's my inner seal now I just have to do my outer seal all right here's my water pump out outer seal and I'm not unsure of which way the um, little indents go but I got some RTV on it and I I got a one inch socket and this will go right over top and it'll hit the shoulder into place. get this outer shoulder down level touching side but next step is I can get the stator cover on and that'd be a big accomplishment all right my dad doesn't think this wires down properly because if you can see the wire has damage on it from the alternator there right there and we want to rearrange this wire so that it we can make sure that it's not going to be hit and uh, cut up because we don't want any damage. This is sharp, so we're going to try to fix that. Alright, I'm going to take this up here, you guys. I think I'm going to relocate the wires because I don't think they're in the proper place. As you can see, there's damage on the ca outside casing. I think it goes underneath or somewhere else because that's not right. All right, I took this up. I moved that wire and see if this goes down on top of the wire. The wire goes under that. It will not pinch it and th there'll be no way that this would cut into the wire like I think it has done before. All right, so I believe this is correct now because look, it's not pinched. It can still move. That's the way it's supposed to go. Now, if you look at these wires here, there's an... I think they put them in wrong because you see the dent. This indent goes down. So the black wires will go down first. And what I'm going to do, I might not record all of this, is put our black RTV down, smudge it in. Then I'm going to put it, put my first wire down, put it in between the wires, and then put some on top to secure that it will not leak. And I'll put my cover back on. That's where it was leaking before. But I think all it was is the guys who took it off... I think they were in here before because they did not put this on properly. So they probably put a new stator and put it together wrong, put the wires in the wrong order, and they had this all messed up. So I'm glad I came in here and we're fixing this. Okay, so I didn't really record much, but got that all back together. And so now all I have to do is get my racks back on. And like I mentioned before, I got the tool here um, that you're supposed to use. I used a screwdriver to um, pop the um, clips out before, but I got clips, so now I can install my holders on either side. And my dad had some extra in the garage for his Honda, 
And um, so I got my racks I'm going to be putting on. And I also painted the um, little, um, I don't know what you call them, studs or something. And they go right here to support the frame to make it level. In the back and the front there, that I have uh, six of those. But I'm going to put them on and then I'm going to put the wheel on. i got to jack this up a little bit more and get that wheel on. And then I'll be ready to ride, guys. I'm excited. is I got my grills on and I got my footrest assembly all on so now I'm ready to drive. I'm excited. Now I gotta get this out of my building and I'll ride with my dad tonight. So this is fun. I'm I hope I fixed it and I'm super glad I went in there like I mentioned and fixed it. Now I'm gonna show you a little footage of me riding it. So let me get it out of the, my building here and I'll show you guys. Checking for leaks, and look at that. See, we put black RTV around the wire grommets. That's where it was leaking out before. They're back. They were backwards, and I'm glad. I'm actually glad we took the stator cover off, got in there, and saw it, and fixed that problem. Cause you know what? That wire would have been shredded by that alternator. So I'm glad it's fixed, and I'm excited. Let's go ride. And now all I have to do is change the oil and and um and the filter and do an oil change but all right i've decided just to do the oil change here and i want to show you again just to say it again this four-wheeler takes 10w40 oil i got a five core and it's full synthetic and i got a knn oil filter number kn-204-1 and so what I'm going to do is I think it's 12 millimeter bolt. There's more different size bolts under there. But uh, there's a big shield blocking off the oil filter. So I'm going to take that off. And then I'll change the oil on this. Now that the um, oil is all hot, I can do an oil change. Alright, I got this shield off here. Now I can get down to the oil filter. All this junk. Road debris. You're driving, but now I can get to the oil filter. Let me see under here. Yep, now I got a big wide open space to get to it so I can replace it. Alright, I got my oil pan here. This will slide right under here, catch all my oil, and if you look at the design of the oil filter that's in there, and the new one here, don't need a, a special, don't need the um, oil filter wrench, you just get the correct socket, and it's a, um, what I get, 17 millimeter, this will fit right on there, and I'll loosen it, taking it off of there, and got my old pen to catch all my oil. Alright, I'm under here now. I want to just give you guys a look. So, there's my oil drain plug right there. And that's what I'm going to be taking off first. To let it drain out. And then I'll be taking my oil filter off. Which is up. Sorry guys, it's, it's tight space under here. But... Um, my oil filter's up there as well. I'm going to be taking that off as well. But I'm going to take this oil drain plug off first. And I got my lucky kitty helping me. And, um, so let me see what size that bolt is. Alright, alright, I just took it off. It's 17 millimeter. Got the oil flowing here. 
See that black old oil? We don't want that. We want some nice, clean, fresh oil. And the engine's going to go, ah. Oh, it's going to love me for this. So I'm glad I'm taking this off. Changing the oil here. And always change your oil filter when you change your oil. That's what my dad taught me. I don't know if you can hear it, but Lucky's purring. So while that's draining and getting every last drop out of it, I'm going to take the oil filter off. And that is a 17 millimeter as well. Squirrel! I got my squirrel out here too. He's my buddy. So I'm going to clean under there. I'm going to pressure wash, get that all hosed off before I put the um, skid plate back on. Pressure wash, clean everything. Before I go out in the woods, I want to get my seat, uh, my um, skid plate on so I don't rip any CV boot or anything like that. And to get it protected and get it nice before I ride. So um, I'm going to get this. Oil. Okay, just took off the oil filter. And let me show you here. So what I got is... The um, oil pan has an indent, and I put my oil filter in it so that it'll drain out. But I took that off up there and get the new one on. Okay, now I'm going to inspect the oil filter and uh, make sure that the seal is not still on the engine. But um, I'm going to put the oil drain plug back in. Here's the old one. See, it's still got the seal on it. And... I'm going to tighten the oil drain plug, get my new oil filter, and I'm going to put some oil on the seal, put the new oil filter in, and then I'm going to fill it with some fresh dinosaur syrup, as Terrell Fixes All calls it. And, um, you see under here? Yep, nice. So, now... I'll get my 17 millimeter, and I'll put my oil drain plug back on. I believe it's the torque um, rating is like 15 or something like that, 15 uh, pounds. Here's my oil drain plug. Wipe the off, wipe it off. All right, and hand tighten it as far as I can, and then I'm gonna tighten it a little with the ratchet. Okay, comparing new to old, see it's the exact same number, KN204-1, and here's my new oil filter. Take this off, and I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the seal, and get the seal all wet with oil, and then... Hand tighten it, and once it's once you get it as tight as, or get it down to touch, once you get it down to touch, then you go one turn more. All right, now I'm going a three quarters turn after it touches, and I preferably would like to see the numbers at the bottom so I know what oil to filter for next time, but. So you can see the numbers right there. And I'm going to write all this stuff down on the oil filter um, paper here. And I'm going to write the hours when I... So now I'm going to fill with oil. And it says 2.1 to 2.5 quarts of oil is what it takes. So I'm going to put um, a little over 2 in. Check it. And I want to get it to the high mark on my oil stick. Look at the color difference in oil here. I got two quarts of oil, I'm gonna put it in. All right, now I'm gonna start it and check for leaks. My drain plug. Check my oil filter, and um, I put my cap back on. 
So now, let's see how our indicator looks. Wipe it off. And nice accurate reading here. And we are Couldn't tell here, guys. Let me try it again. Oh, we're right here. We're right on the high mark. So it's all the way wet up to here. So that's perfect. So All right, so I have to go to the fair now, guys. But I'm going to ride a later, so I'm going to have to put this away now. I checked it, no leaks. <laughs> Just got back from the fair, now I'm ready to ride. pressure wash the skid plate and dad's got the rancher out we're gonna go for some trail riding and I'm getting all these 10 millimeter bolts back in and getting my skid plate back on so no um, no branches in the woods can damage the underbody here all right we're gonna go riding now
some raspberries and I just hit five miles on it. I'm loving it so far. Okay. So, I just finished riding, had a nice trail ride with my dad. I was using um, two-wheel drive in the woods, and then when I got to like the steeper parts of the woods, I would use um, low gear. I tried four-wheel drive in the woods, but honestly, I didn't really need it. I was surprised. This is a big machine, 750 cc, and my dad is a Honda Rancher, 400 cc, so it's almost twice the engine. And so what I did is I did some riding in the trails, did some riding on the lawn, high gear. It cruises. It's uh, pretty powerful. And I showed you guys the winch, and I tried the uh, LED bar out in the woods because it's getting a little darker. It's uh, about 7 o'clock now, but uh, I didn't need it. But the winch was kind of handy to pull that tree out of the woods. I was just a small little tree just to show you guys an example. But um, it's 2,500 pound rated and the light bar works nice. Hope I got some cool shots for you guys. And I checked the oil and it's not leaking. Everything seems to work A-OK -okay, guys. It's uh, got nice tires. It climbs right over logs. Um, no leak, no drip. That was fixing the stator cover. I learned quite a lot. I fixed the stator cover, the stator gasket, uh, the stator wires, the grommets going in. Sealed that off. Got a new gasket. Got a new water pump seal and bearing and outer seal. Changed the oil. Changed the oil filter. I put some antifreeze in it. Uh... Just filled it up with a little bit of gas, and so I'm very excited so far. Drove it a couple miles uh, out in the woods, and I drove this six miles in total. It is a very powerful machine. It'll go over all the hills and, and terrain you need. It goes over very rough terrain. I love the tires on it. I love the low gear four-wheel drive, two-wheel or four-wheel selectable, and I'm happy it's fixed. Got amazing tires. I'm excited to try out my winch, my light bar, my trailer to trailer in some wood, and overall, it's a great machine so far. I love it, and if I maintenance it, then it'll last me 20 years easily, so I'm very excited. It's peaceful, just a trail ride, and you know, after school, after uh, work, helping dad, uh, nighttime is fun to ride, anytime really, but um, I'm going to get to riding, there's my 2009 Kawasaki 750 Brute Force, and V-Twin, very powerful machine, so I'm going to get to some riding guys, and why don't you guys let me know down in the comment box down below, uh, any questions, any things that any tips or anything that would be helpful to me if you own one of these I'd like to hear a little bit about it and any maintenance any anything guys so leave me a comment down below uh, like and subscribe for more future content if you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next one guys have fun